You've been summoned for a mission, the most important mission, perhaps, of your entire life, to help a summoned hero face and defeat the Demon Lord. And yet, when you arrive, you find out that everyone's really weak, like you seem to be about the only person who actually is in the right place. What's a guy supposed to do with that? Hello everybody, Justice R. Stone here with another light novel review. In fact, on this channel I cover all things light novels, not only reviews, but also news, countdowns of what's popular in Japan, and I post the light novel podcast here as well. So, if you love light novels, or you're brand new to them and just kind of getting into them, you should consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing volume number one of Defeating the Demon Lords a Cinch. If you've got a ringer, that is by Tsuki Kage. This one is released in English by Yen On. If you want to pick up your own copy, I've got links in the description down below to Amazon and the Book Depository. Now this is a relatively new series, there's only four volumes out in Japan. Volume 4 was just released in July of 2018, so it is an ongoing series. It is a fantasy series, it does have an element of isekai on it, but it is a slight twist on the whole isekai genre, and uh, well, I'll get into that with the review. Now defeating the Demon Lord's Ascinch follows main character Ares Crown. He is a crusader, a priest, who lives in this world that has been terrorized by demons for over a decade, and they're led by a demon lord so powerful that no one has been able to defeat him to date. In fact, things are so desperate that the kingdoms have used the most powerful magic at their disposal to summon a hero from another world. And so Ares, being an incredibly powerful and strong crusader, has been summoned by the church to go and join up with the hero's party so that he can support them with his healing magic as well as his, as his battle prowess and strategies. Now when he gets there though, he discovers that the hero's weak, the other knight or swordsman that's been brought on board is weak, the mage is weak, and... The hero, Toto, doesn't like dudes. In fact, he's kind of like, I want a party of chicks. And uh, Ares, you're not a girl, so get out. And Ares finds himself kind of stuck in a situation where the best hope for the world is a jerk, is mentally unstable, and is weak as all get out, and is probably going to die without support of someone stronger. And so Ares kind of puts aside his pride and decides to try and aid Toto from the shadows. Now this book has a couple of cool little twists on the standard isekai slash fantasy type genre, and it plays a little bit even with elements that most players of like RPGs are going to feel really at home with and probably going to get a little bit of a laugh out of just because of how things are kind of turned on their head. Now, first of all, with the whole isekai thing, yes, it is an isekai. Uh, Naotsugu Todo has been brought from modern-day Japan to be the hero of this world. But the kind of twist is, is that this isn't Todo's story. It's Ares' story. Ares' crown, who lives in this world, has lived in this world the entirety of his life, and is incredibly powerful. That's another twist, is that he's a priest, but he's stronger than the mage. He's stronger than the swordsman tank that should be in the party. Which, like I said, if you've played a lot of RPGs, you know that usually your healing character, your support magic character, is not the strongest member of your party. You certainly don't expect them to pick up a mace and go and start bashing people's heads in, which Ares is completely capable of doing. The other twist here is, of course, the whole thing with Toto wanting a party of girls. I mean, the whole thing is, is that that seems to be a little bit of a play on the whole harem thing, where, you know, we have a male summoned to another world, and just for some reason, he ends up with a party of nothing but girls, but in this case, it's actually Toto's decision and effort to try and have a party of girls that sort of sets the tone for things. 
So it's kind of, again, I think that little play on harem. And you will find out more about sort of Toto's reasoning behind that as the book goes on. So if that initially kind of puts you off of the book, give it a chance. Because like I said, there is some reasoning behind it that might sort of make you feel a little bit different as you go along. In terms of the characters, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to be honest. Toto is probably going to turn a bunch of you off. Uh, kind of annoying. He's got that whole self-righteous, I'm going to fight for justice and bring peace to the world. But it's to the point where it actually makes him do really stupid things and cause problems. In fact, way bigger problems than he probably should. And again, it falls to Ares to clean up his mess. The two other characters, Limis, who is the sort of lolly mage in all of this, um, she doesn't get a lot of character development. Neither does Arya, who is the swordswoman, the knight or whatever, you know, the tank member of the team. Uh, the two of them, you don't get a lot from them, honestly. You get glimpses that you may think to yourself, oh, well, there could be sort of a cool backstory here. And not only that, but why aren't they questioning why they're in this party, considering how weak they are? And uh, why aren't they kind of being put off by Toto's personality and his whole, I like girls, not dudes, attitude? Those are kind of questions that we don't get as developed as the book goes on. Uh, some of them a little bit, but I'd say those two characters kind of suffer from not really being all that developed much. There's a lot more story, I think, to be told with those two, which I'm sure will probably happen in later volumes. You know, this being a light novel series and this being only volume number one, this is really about Ares and it's about Toto. It's about Toto, about how he is really helpless and going to make a huge mess of things, assuming he even manages to survive, and about Ares, who is the reason to read this book. <laughs> Ares is kind of a joke as a character. I mean, not joke as in, like, you poke fun, ha ha ha, but it's kind of like this, it's kind of like that underhanded, dirty joke, kind of like, he's a priest, but he says the F word. He bashes in people's heads with a mace. He drinks alcohol. He cusses all the time. Like, he eats monster meat, which apparently is something priests don't typically do. He, like, and you know what? And most of this book is told in the first person through Ares' voice. So you're following this character who is crass, who is all about business. It's all about just getting the job done. He's not stupid. He's not clueless. He is methodical. He thinks things through. But at the same time, he's given to fits of anger and frustration. He, like, reports back. He uses magic so he can communicate with the church. And he basically bitches to his, like, boss about why am I here? What is this even going on? Like, what have you guys done? You're going to get the world destroyed because this hero is inept and maybe unstable. And the people that you have teamed him up with are weaklings and they're all going to die. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's funny to kind of have this character who is very powerful. In fact, probably at the upper tiers of human beings in this entire world, kind of looking at this situation and commenting it on a in a very crass and very blunt kind of way. And I really liked his character quite a lot. He he's not an anti-hero, but he's not really a good guy, you know, like pretty much everything he does is just for the sake of the job. Like, even at one point, he, like, you know, he heals somebody. It's a bit of a spoiler, I guess. But I'll tell you, because it makes good sense. It's not a huge spoiler. But he heals someone, and then basically turns around and threatens them to make sure that they won't tell anybody how they got hurt. <laughs> like, And I mean, like, wholesale intimidates. Like, puts them down, makes them feel like they're weaklings if they say anything. Like, like the man is, at times vicious <laughs> he's like wow you know he yeah 
like you may find yourself I don't know sometimes I found myself kind of wondering like maybe he's going too far but then I was like hmm but I like it so I'll just kind of let it go which probably says something about me I guess as a person maybe I don't know but uh but I just it was just I don't know there was just something refreshing about having an isekai story being told from the point of view of a character who is pretty OP but also recognizes that he's not strong enough to do what the hero is supposed to do and and his frustration and anger at the fact that this hero is useless. This hero knows nothing about the world. This hero doesn't have any kind of street smarts that can be applied to this world. The, the hero really hasn't thought things through. Like, all the things that you kind of see in an isekai, but the main character is the person who was summoned. And, oh, they muddle through somehow, but... In this one, yeah, no, it, it's it's kind of fun to see it being told from the point of view of somebody who's very knowledgeable, very about getting things done, and has seen the worst that the world has to offer, and then is looking at this hero like, ugh, we're screwed. I would be remiss if I didn't mention one other thing that I kind of was like, when I read it, I thought, oh man, like, that's like a really needlessly sexist thing to put in this book is <laughs> is the fact that women can be priests they can be very powerful but they aren't able to cast any miracles if they lose their virginity I, I kind of I kind of wondered why that was in this book and and really when I read it I was kind of like why is that there you know like why does that need to be there I think I've actually come up with an idea of why that was included in the book, but it would be a big spoiler to say why. Uh, you might be able to figure out once you finish the book, uh, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, one thing I will also caution you about, uh, there are spoilers revealed, even just in the character bios at the very back of the book, and in the afterward by the author, so... Don't look at the character bios, just read the book all the way from beginning to end so you don't spoil it for yourself. Just, there's a couple of twists and turns and surprises through the book that kind of made it fun to read and I had guessed most of them, but it was still fun to kind of go, uh, maybe I'm wrong, oh, well, what if I am wrong? Like, if I'm right, this makes sense, but if I'm wrong, ew, I kind of wonder how this is going to play out. And it was kind of fun to be able to do that, and the, the way the book is written, it the reveals make sense. You aren't shocked by them, but at the same time, they add a nice little twist to the story. So, again, don't read the character bios. I mean, you know, there's always that temptation to look at the back and go, Oh, look, character art and little blurbs about them. Yeah, don't read those. So, all in all, defeating the Demon Lord's a cinch, if you've got a ringer. It was good. I liked it, actually. I, I don't think I really would have enjoyed it if it was just an isekai from Toto's point of view. Uh, but having it told from Aerie's point of view and his voice the way that it was, I really liked it. It was a very different first-person voice than we see in a lot of light novels. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, I there, there was quite a few times where I, I just chuckled. I, I just... Not even because it was necessarily funny, but just because I was like, ha he's the priest! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like I said, that's I think that's kind of part of the joke, right? Is that that's the priest, really? Uh, so all in all, you know what? If you like some fantasy, if you want to have some action, magic, and you don't mind some of the isekai elements, and like I said, they're really not, you know, huge, to be honest... This is definitely one that I would say to check out. Now for my next review, uh, even though there's been quite a number of brand new series that have premiered already, I'm going back to a series that I have not read in quite some time to try and at least get caught up on the next two volumes over the next week or so because it's what we're going to be covering in the next light novel podcast and that is How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. Uh, this one, you know, Sam from J Novel Club is constantly saying that it is the top-selling series that they have. I really liked Volumes 1 and 2, uh, and then I just kind of like, well, honestly, for the channel I try to read as many Volume 1s as I can, and unfortunately when I do that I kind of get away from series sometimes. They 
they run away from me or my attention span. But it's actually a really good time to get back into it because Seven Seas, this is one of the titles that they're doing the print edition for and they are releasing volume one in print in September. So it's kind of a great time for us to do it on the podcast and it's, I guess, probably a good time for me to get back into the series at least a little bit. Gonna try and read volumes three and four to finish out sort of the main first arc and those will be the volumes we discuss on the next podcast, which should be out probably next weekend, so in about nine or ten days. So if you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels or you're just getting into them, you should subscribe. I do reviews like this every single week, as well as countdowns of the best-selling titles in Japan, and like I said, the light novel podcast is posted here as well. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.